EV enthusiasts beware. Tesla is my play shares slumping again today at a downgrade. Tesla's shares are dropping as GM unveils a revolutionary zero emission engine set to make electric and internal combustion vehicles obsolete. This groundbreaking technology promises to drive us towards an eco-friendly automotive future. Let's dive into GM's game-changing innovation as their CEO reveals the engine poised to transform the industry. What is this new technology? GM's search for an alternative to EVs has led to compressed air technology. Initially used in the 19th century for mine locomotives and trams, this technology was abandoned for more potent internal combustion engines. In the early 2010s, Peugeot explored a hybrid combining compressed air with internal combustion, sparking interest despite limited progress. GM recognized the potential of compressed air vehicles, but understood that significant development was needed to compete with internal combustion engines and EVs. Consequently, GM began researching and developing compressed air technology alongside their EV and internal combustion vehicle projects. So how do compressed air vehicles function? Compressed air vehicles operate differently from regular engines and EVs. They use pneumatic engines, which are similar to internal combustion engines, but rely on air pressure instead of explosions. Pistons in these engines are connected to springs. Air is introduced into the chamber, increasing pressure to push the piston. The air is then released, and the spring returns the piston to its original position, completing the cycle. The engine's similarity to internal combustion engines allows for a wide range of technical solutions, shortening the development cycle, which attracted GM. Now, let's explore the benefits of compressed air compared to EVs and internal combustion engines. The most notable benefit of compressed air engines is that they are 100% pollution-free, using only pressurized air with no environmental damage. They eliminate the direct pollution caused by combustion engines and are cheaper to produce than EVs, requiring no rare earth materials. Additionally, compressed air engines are more eco-friendly than EVs, as the electric grid is still largely dependent on fossil fuels. Another key benefit of compressed air engines is their lower production cost. They endure lower pressures than gasoline or diesel engines, requiring less strong and hardened steel or metal making them more economically viable and eco-friendly to produce in large quantities. Additionally, the running costs are unrivaled, as compressed air is much cheaper and easier to acquire than fuel or electricity. These engines are also future-proof, using only pressurized air that remains unchanged after use. However, compressed air engines have drawbacks that limit their wider use, they are often underpowered due to the low energy density of pressurized air, resulting in low potency. The light components and lack of high pressure production lead to poor torque, making them less practical in real-world applications. Additionally, the engine must spin at high RPMs, causing excess wear on components due to its fully mechanical nature. Furthermore, since compressed air engines don't use liquid as a propellant, Adding lubricators is more challenging than in internal combustion engines. Their biggest issue is inefficiency. Most prototypes have a range of only 140 kilometers, less than 100 miles, requiring frequent refills and making long trips unreliable. Most prototypes use regular steel air tanks for storing pressurized air, which added weight and made the car less potent. These tanks were also susceptible to explosions if damaged. However, GM has been working hard to address these issues and has made significant progress. Firstly, the power issue has been addressed with new high-pressure air tanks that compress air further, resulting in higher cylinder pressure. GM's new prototype now achieves performance figures comparable to gasoline engines, although torque still needs improvement. Additionally, GM has extended the vehicle's range by turning the chassis into a large compressed air reservoir. This requires specific reinforcements or composite materials like fiber reinforced thermoplastics, allowing the vehicle to remain lightweight and safer than using regular high pressure tanks as rupturing the reservoir won't 
cause explosions. When will this technology be implemented? The answer is complex, but there is a solid possibility of these engines entering mass production in the next few years. GM is deeply invested in this technology, continuously researching and solving existing problems to create a revolutionary product. The mechanical similarity to internal combustion engines allows GM to develop these engines much faster than starting from scratch. That said, it would be naive to believe GM is doing this out of pure goodwill. GM knows the days of internal combustion engines are numbered and they lack a strong presence in the EV market. Therefore, they aim to create a new market of vehicles to dominate other manufacturers and make both internal combustion and EVs obsolete, securing their position as the leader in the new automotive age. As promising as this sounds, it's not the first time a major manufacturer has tried implementing compressed air into vehicles. About 10 years ago, Peugeot developed a hybrid version of their Peugeot 2008 crossover that combined an internal combustion engine with compressed air. This powertrain merged the power and torque of an internal combustion engine with the ecological benefits of compressed air, achieving an impressive 120 miles per gallon. However, despite initial success, Peugeot quietly abandoned the project, citing profitability concerns that didn't seem to add up. Why did they abandon it? It's anyone's guess, but some believe it has to do with large oil companies, as such an engine developed and produced on a large scale could potentially threaten their business. This might sound far-fetched, but it's not unprecedented. In the mid-90s, Stanley Allen Meyer developed a water fuel cell that could power cars using only water. After going public, Meyer faced pressure from oil firms to abandon his work. He resisted and sought funding, but he passed away under suspicious circumstances and his prototypes mysteriously vanished. So GM, if you're listening, continue developing the engine in absolute privacy or it might face the same fate as Peugeot's hybrid or worse, Stanley Allen Meyer's water fuel cell. So what do you think of GM's air-powered engine? Do you see it hitting the market anytime soon? Let us know in the comment section below and please hit that like button, share and subscribe. See you in the next video.